while the american kids are busy building the next chat gpt the chinese are busy creating deep seek well i read this somewhere that the indian kids are busy watching sayara and crying now the reason i told you this joke is because we as indians or rather i should say global leaders of the world should focus on the right things and my duty as one of the torch bearers of biotechnica is to show you the path and help you understand what's coming today in this video we are going to talk about the biggest war ever fought in biotech and it is not from drug discovery companies it is not from ai companies it is not from any other biotech companies or biosimilar companies the biggest war which will be fought in biotech where every biotech tech bio and it company will come together to fight will be human brain yes you heard me right this 4 and a half kg organ is where you are sitting right now and i am sitting right now everything inside this head is our identity but this 4 and a half kg organ cannot survive without this body but in some cases our brain stays undamaged but unfortunately because of some accident something happens and now the body is damaged so scientists are racing towards brain computer interface and today in this video we are going to talk about how bci or brain computer interface is going to be the next big war in biotech and tech bio where every google of the world every facebook of the world every meta or neuralink or the elon musk of the world will fight this war now that is what makes it very interesting because there are big warriors from the tech bio companies from the biotech era and of course from the it world who are going to join hands to win but why exactly this is so interesting and important because of four use cases you see when our brain gets damaged we don't want to lose the person so that's one use case so that we can augment the brain so that it keeps keeps functioning naturally that's number one the second when the body is damaged but the brain is alive so that we can help the brain express itself and continue normal life right the third is augmentation giving super abilities to humans and the fourth is fixing regular diseases now any of these four cause is the reason why everybody is interested in bci but you know why the it companies why the biotech companies are and the healthcare companies are interested because of the super human abilities you can give to the brain and how can you use your brain to control computers because the next trillion dollars will be made when brain connects to a computer so today i am going to take you through the history the current scenario the future and how do you fit in to this particular ball game now like i said this is a war and every biotech tech bio company is going to come in and that is why you can design that's how you can design your career in the world of biotech in neurobiology and neuroscience so if you're someone who has even if 1% interest in neurosciences and neurobiology this video is going to be a game changer this is going to be a eye opener and the reason i'm making this video is because it is getting interesting by the day because now ai and brain bci when combined together it is going to be a huge opportunity for all of us now let's talk about bci first bci translates into brain computer interface where we translate the brain activity into digital signals to control the computers right now bci dates back to hans berger who uh, came up with the eeg discovery in 1924 now there are various other examples of bci it has always been there around us for last 80 or 100 years because of some implants like the cochlear implants which we used for hearing right eeg headsets which is used for als patients to to type or control the cursors right now this has been always there but there were limitations in the early bcis the hardware was bulky the data was crude and the brain signals were hazy they were not very clear and that is where we wanted better now enter Elon Musk and Neuralink. Neuralink came up with the Link device. Now this is a coin-sized transmitter implanted at the back of your skull 
which has 1024 electrons. Out of that, 64 ultra thin threads go 3 to 5 millimeters deep into the brain. They wanted to scale this because suppose we have to do it for multiple patients. And of course, a regular neurosurgeon cannot do these kind of implants where the electrode is 3 to 5 millimeters. So they came up with the robot, Surgical Robot R1, which is designed to insert these threads with precision and scalability. Now, what is very interesting is the bi-directional functionality. It can read the brain signals, it can write to the brain, like stimulating visual cortex for the blind users, and they claim to have the future potential to give superhuman vision. For example, you can see through the wall. Well, that kind of superhuman vision is what uh, Elon Musk envisions with Neuralink. Now, what is the benefit of this? You can restore the movement of spinal cord injury, loss of voice, you can treat depression, you can improve the memory of the person, you can treat dementia. Now, in future, when the brain-computer interface linking is done completely, there will be telepathy without me telling to the person on the other side that, hey, do this, we can do telepathy. Instead of doing video calls, we can do telepathy. We can do AI integration and we can create human AI symbiosis so that we have superhuman abilities. Sitting here, by just thinking about Elon Musk, I could talk to Elon Musk. Imagine, that's the kind of, that's the power of AI and uh, human brain, right? Imagine that we could talk to 1,000 people at the same time. Instead of watching one video, we could watch 1,000 videos at the same time. That's the power of our brain, but we don't have the sensors. We have only two eyes, right? So in 2020, they demonstrated these things like neural recording for a pig. 2021, they came up with a primate. A monkey play, played the pong using thoughts. And 2024, the first human implant was done in a human, and that's Nolan Arbaugh. He's a quadriplegic, that means below the head, he is completely immovable. He cannot move his limbs or body. And he could play chess and he could text by just thinking, right? But the story doesn't stop here. There are two other companies and that's where the things get interesting. Now, Neuralink has its own failures. This is a Silicon Valley company, so that means they move very fast and they want to break things. And that is where they overlook a lot of safety issues. Now, 85% of the electrodes which were implanted in Nolan's brain retracted within a week. Now, using software updates, they of course compensated for the loss of signal quality. But the concern was Neuralink has reportedly used animal trials where the animals were not treated well. In 2023, FDA cited that Neuralink has not kept the animals well in the animal testing laboratory. Monkeys' deaths were reported. And their co-founder, Ben Rapport, left due to the disagreement over the invasive approach. Now, the moment I say Ben Rapport, here begins the next journey. 2016, Neuralink started. 2021, Ben Rapport leaves Neuralink and starts his own company. And the company's name is Precision Neuroscience, the second competitor to Neuralink. Very less people know about this, but they have a different approach. Co-founded by Dr. Rapport in 2021, with a focus on non-invasive, medically safe, brain control interfaces. So what they say is, okay, let's not go ahead and do this. Okay, let's not implant inside the brain, let's put just below the skin, right? Of course, there will be signal issues, but imagine we don't actually go and, you know, insert anything inside the brain because that leads to scarring, that leads to loss of tissue, that can lead to major issues, right? So that is where ultra thin flexible array placed in brain surface, not penetrating, pressed, placed exactly above the brain surface, which can just listen into the signals, right? And it is not completely inside the brain, so it will not cause any scarring. So it is non-invasive. And it allows the placement of multiple arrays, more than 4,000 electrodes can be placed inside the brain. Now, this is claimed to record the most detailed human activity to date. In fact, the data which they started getting while they were operating the human was incredible, right? So far, they have conducted 25 plus human implants and that's where you have massive success. But do you think this war stops here? Enter Synchron. Synchron is better. Founded by Dr. Tom Oxley. Synchron has a stent rod device which is delivered through blood vessels. Now, we are not going to operate the human brain. We will just insert a small electrode why the blood vessels where it goes and sits inside the blood vessel just above the brain 
and now it starts listening to the signals. It will listen to the signals, but there are of course loss of signal quality. The signal quality will be low. But of course, we can do many activities like controlling a cursor of a computer, texting, smart home use, like I can just think and the light switch is on, right? These things can be done using this implant and this is not an implant actually, right? So far, 10 permanent implants has been completed and it is FDA approved now for clinical trials and that's where Synchron is the next competitor. But do you think this is the third company and the war is over? No. Let me tell you that every tech bio and biotech and IT company is going to jump into this. Into the fourth player, the most established player in the market right now. The name is BlackRock Neurotech. Now, this is not the BlackRock Invest Investment Funds. It is BlackRock Neurotech. It is a different type of company founded in 2008. And they have a system called as Move Again System. Now, this is not very lightweight. It is actually a bulky system with rigid grid of penetrating silicon electrodes. There are fewer electrodes per array, that is 96 to 128 electrodes only, but they were the first to achieve first ever audible speech restoration. So audible speech restoration was done using this. Now they used AI to decode the signal intent from the neural activity. So the person could not speak and they used the signal and replicated it. Okay, they replicated using AI. So now the person just thinks and the machine speaks. Now imagine, do you know what happened? when the first experiment was going on and the person who could not speak could actually speak in his own voice using a computer where AI was mimicking his signals in the brain. He started crying, scientists started crying and his relatives started crying. They could reconstruct the exact patient's own voice with 99.6% accuracy. They used AI to decode the speech intent and brought tears in the eyes of everybody. But these four companies are not just going to stop there. Every biotech, every pharma bio, every tech bio, every IT company is going to get into this. But because of this reason, there's going to be four ethical issues. The first is BCI blurs the line between medical aid and human enhancement. Imagine a kid who has a BCI and he scores better in maths than a kid who has no BCI. So that will create a lot of ethical issues. Imagine Government is able to read through your thoughts and they can manipulate your thoughts. Imagine the data safety. If a private company has a control over your thoughts or can listen into your thoughts, where are they storing it? Can't they control it? Can't they misuse it? Can't they sell that data? And can't they play ads through us? I hope you have seen the recent uh, Black Mirror episode where exactly this happens with the uh, company, right? So there are four categories of BCI as of now. First is treatment, which is of course, there's a huge demand for that. Medical interventions like restoring the movement and speech. Next is prevention, early monitoring and intervention for at-risk individuals such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Enhancement, that is where the ethical concern starts, boosting the natural abilities like memory, sensory input, being able to see through far off places, right? And the fourth one is augmentation, creating newer abilities like telepathy, direct AI inter integration, and being able to watch maybe thousand YouTube videos in one go, right? So there are concerns, there are risks, there are ethical dilemmas, there is, there'll be questions of inequality, there, there'll be questions of brain privacy, ownership and security. There is question of potential misuse of the corporations, advertisers and government. There could be hacking risk implanted BCIs. And that is where FDA is really, really very clear about what exactly to expect from a BCI company, right? Medical BCIs are subject to strict FDA regulations, data security, patient security, ethical practices, everything has to be legally enforced and it opens a pandorum of canworms actually. So my question to all of you is, imagine you being able to create the future of humanity, you, you going beyond neurosurgery and neurobiology, you creating that bridge in between neurons and computers and we which we popularly call as BCI imagine you are the center of this revolution called as BCI imagine if you can do that now there are certain companies and institutions in our country also which is working on that such as TBRI central brain research institution then there, there you have Nimhans which is working on similar things so you can do your PhD or research in these uh, places and there are 
countries such as Israel, US, European Union, China, which will, you know, really pay you millions of dollars to just onboard you. And forget that, India's DRDO is having projects on this. So what are you waiting for? Jump in the world of AI and BCI with Biotechnica. We have AI and drug discovery course starting from 31st of July, which you can register for. And who knows, you might bridge the BCI AI gap with the world coming together. I'm sure this is possible. So here is Shaker Suman signing off with, from this deep dive. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining and keep working hard. All the best.